Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to The Early Show with me, Pastor Gina, where I share with you news as well as unpack real-world events and offer practical advice, all from a Dharma perspective to help us to navigate the challenges that we face every day. This week, I want to talk about contraception, but before we get there, if you would like to sponsor a video in this program, there is a link in the description section for you to do that. So, contraception is also known as birth control and is any device or method that's used to prevent pregnancy. So it can be the pill, it can be an implant, it can be an intrauterine device, or something as straightforward as a condom. But first, before we move on to that topic, a quick reminder that in Buddhism, having children is not a spiritual obligation. I talked about this in a previous video called What Does Buddhism Say About Having Children? which I'll put a link to in the description section of this video. So Buddhism does not teach that it's someone's duty to have kids. Buddhism also doesn't teach that parents have to be married in order to have children. In areas of the world where Buddhists feel that they should have kids, it's because of culture, tradition and so on, and not because the Buddhist scriptures say that it's someone's obligation or duty to have kids. So if we extend that logic, it means that contraception is an acceptable choice if a Buddhist feels that they're not ready to have children. So which forms of contraception are acceptable? Buddhists believe that life starts when the consciousness enters, when the egg and the sperm meet. So any contraception which prevents a fertilized egg from implanting in the uterus or kills a fertilized egg is not an appropriate choice because that will mean taking the life of a sentient being. Choosing whether or not to use contraception is actually part of a wider conversation about all of the major decisions that we have to make in life and in this case, it's specific specifically regarding having and raising children. For both men and women, raising a child is a decision that should only be made when we feel ready for it, whether that is emotionally, psychologically, physically or even financially. That's because having or raising a child should not be about fixing a relationship, should not be about fixing a marriage and should not be about giving in to societal pressure. The fact is that having or raising a child comes with the enormous responsibility over another sentient being's life. So, if you're going to have kids, do it with thought, do it with care and do it with intention. Realise that if you're not ready for it, someone else is going to suffer and that someone else is someone whom you claim to love very much, which is your child. So many children already suffer the consequences of their parents' lack of preparedness and readiness, whether it's through abuse, abandonment or neglect. So in this wider conversation of someone's readiness to parent, contraception therefore becomes a wise, reasonable, acceptable choice for someone who wishes to or who needs to prevent or postpone pregnancy. Welcome back to this week's It's a Plant-Based Life where we talk about plant-based news, plant-based products, plant-based facts and basically everything that you need to know in order to live a more plant-based life. Let's talk today about another one of those nutrients that people think you're going to be deficient in if you're on a plant-based diet. No, it's not protein because we have covered that in a previous video. And just as a quick reminder, for vegetarians, protein is still easy to get because they still consume milk and dairy. But I did also talk in that previous video about vegan sources of protein. This week, we are going to talk about calcium. Again, I want to preface this video by saying that I'm clearly not a nutrient or a medical expert. If you have specific nutritional or dietary requirements, you really should go and see a health professional. What I'm talking about here are general guidelines so that people become more aware that they can get their nutritional needs met through plant-based sources. So, how much calcium do you need? And how do you make sure that your body actually absorbs the calcium that you consume? And what is calcium actually used for? A person's calcium requirements actually changes as they age, but Dr. Walter Willard, the chair of the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, says, the World Health Organization's recommendation of 500 milligrams is probably about right. The United Kingdom sets the goal at 700 milligrams, which is fine too. Calcium is needed to maintain healthy bones and teeth, but because our body does not produce calcium, it's something that we actually need to consume. And whilst most non-vegans can get their calcium intake from dairy foods such as milk, yogurt and cheese, vegans can get it from plant-based sources. According to the National Health Service in the UK, good plant-based sources for vegans include green leafy vegetables such as broccoli, cabbage, okra, kale, collard greens and even bok choy, fortified unsweetened soy, rice and oat drinks, calcium set tofu, sesame seeds and tahini, beans, lentils and chickpeas, and dried fruits such as raisins, prunes, figs and dried apricots. Now, did you know that in order for our bodies to absorb calcium more efficiently, we also actually need vitamin D. Vitamin D helps us to regulate the amount of calcium and phosphate in our bodies and good plant-based sources of vitamin D for vegans include exposure to sunlight, but do remember to cover up or protect your skin before it starts to turn red or burn, fortified fat spreads, breakfast cereals and unsweetened soy drinks with vitamin D added, and vitamin D supplements. Just make sure to read the label 
flavour to ensure that the vitamin D that you're getting is not of animal origin. So what's the key approach here? The key here is variety and not eating french fries 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and then wondering why we're not getting the nutrients that we need. If you're on a plant-based diet or considering going on a plant-based diet, it's time to think outside of the carton when it comes to getting our calcium intake. So do let me know how you ensure that you get the calcium you need in the comment section below. Welcome back to the Weekly Roundup where I tell you about news and events that are happening throughout our organisation as well as things that have happened in the past week. So our lockdown here in Malaysia has been extended which means that our activities are going to be continuing online for the time being. I know, I know, it'd be so nice to welcome all of you back here to Kachara Forest Retreat but all of us have to do our part to keep everyone safe so let's all stay online for the time being, okay? This week, the program starts with a once upon a time sharing from Pastor David on Rimuji's activities on the internet. Pastor David's going to be talking about Rimuji's personal interests like Bigfoot and the paranormal, and then giving everyone some insight into how Rimuji harnessed the power of the internet in order to spread the Dharma. That sharing is going to be taking place on June 23rd on the Kachara Facebook fan page, so do keep your eyes out for that. Then we have JP's Detox Your Mind session coming up this Saturday as well. Last week, JP spoke about love for others, and I hope that you guys were able to tune in and to catch that. Just in case you missed it, you can always go and watch the replay on the Kachara Forest Retreat Facebook fan page. This week, JP is going to be talking about love for yourself and what self-love looks like and how you can and should really take care of yourself. That's coming up on June 26th, so don't forget to register early so that you can get involved in the private workshop that takes place immediately after. Alright, that's it from me for this week. As I mentioned, the lockdown has been extended, so we're not going anywhere. So if you have a question that you would like answered or you have a topic that you would like covered, drop me a message and I'll do my best to answer it. As ever, please stay home, please stay safe and don't go out if you don't have to. Thanks so much again for joining me. I'll see you guys again next week, same time, same place. Have a great week ahead and as ever, please don't forget to be kind to each other. Bye!